<laughs> you know, it's it's bands like uh, Glory Hammer that will occasionally make you really appreciate what power metal actually is. <laughs> Do you think anybody in power metal actually takes themselves seriously? Well, how can you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> shit, dude. It's it's fucking ridiculous. Man of War is ridiculous. Yeah, and they did fucking twelve minute epic ballads. Well, but back in the fucking eighties, let's right. Yeah, it. yeah. That's. <laughs> Didn't they have, like, a, a song that was over a half hour long, like Moon Sorrow style? Maybe. I mean, the problem is I never really got into those guys. The only place that sold any of their fucking records when I was growing up in El Paso were, were head shops. That was the only place you could uh, get their shit. Yeah. And, man, trying to come up with an excuse to get your parents to drop you off at a head shop is... Hey, man, I got my grandmother to do it. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> I got her to take me down there to uh, purchase uh, some burned PS1 games. And a, a direct TV card that had been hacked where I didn't have to pay for anything. So were you telling you were sticking it to the man? Is that the Oh, <laughs> man, yeah. When I was a kid, you, I was a worse pirate then than when the internet was actually like a pirate haven. Right. Back then, I had I, like all direct TV channels for nothing. Uh, PS1 games for five bucks a pop. It was a life of Riley. Yeah, I can't, and I, and I I can't really talk shit because in my era... Well, the only fucking platforms were an IBM, and uh, you better have a home office because there, right. there were no fun. There's nothing fun for an IBM. The Apple IIb had just come out. Oh, uh, man, yeah. And again, it was like, uh, you better know what the hell you're doing, really. Or the Commodore 64, and there was a lot of shit for the Commodore 64. That's true. They had a, but as far as piracy went, they had some fairly innovative and cool ways. Yeah. Like no, I mean, they would it, have, like, the, the wheel... Sure. You know, like it'd be like put the wheel in this motion. This was like Secret of Monkey Island had a really cool one. That was it looked cool, and it also served the purpose of making sure you actually own the game. Well, back in those days, we, uh, I mean, everything was always on a five and a quarter floppy. You know, right. so huge fucking disc. You know, and back when the else, floppies but, were truly floppy. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, absolutely. But uh, you know, you the, the the trick then the the, the big pat on your own back was when when you were able to crack a game crack all the protections out yep. of it and put your little shit across the front of it and everything else i wasn't so much into that i'd let everybody else grab that glory while i would go and just promptly copy all the shit right. that they just were cracking pre- appreciate you know? their fine work yeah, by absolutely. using it for your own ways i mean i probably at one time had shit probably 70 or 80 floppies you know God, well back then man it wasn't really looked at as a crime i mean they hated you for doing it but yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, you're not going to get the book or the packaging material, so that's worthless. Oh, oh okay. All right. Cool. I'll just play the game then, man. And granted, this was like pre internet. I mean, but there were photocopiers. So if there was a some form of sheet that you had to like read row seven, column 12, right. and put that letter in, all you need is a copying machine and you're good to go. Yeah. Well, but yeah, and a lot of that shit too. And that's programming basic shit too on the C64, which I never did really. Yeah. I would. I would start, and it's like, fuck this. There's like 3,000 lines for something, and that'd be for, like, D&D character generation. Hell, you had to be a beginner programmer just to get the thing started. Yeah, you know, but I mean... but what was it, like, asterisk eight yeah. something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to load something... Uh, it like was it was loading a game. It was load, uh, quotation, asterisk, quotation, comma, eight, comma, one. God damn, man. You've... Call me Rain Man. And I can't weird. fucking remember my own phone number, but <laughs> <laughs> the shit that was important uh, in life. You know. See, see I, I'm glad you can appreciate the, the blessing and burden that I have as well, because that's exactly what it is. Like, yeah, I know the dumbest shit from like 30 years ago. Yeah. But if you want to ask me what I ate for dinner a week ago, you're shit out yeah, of luck. No idea. No idea. <laughs> uh, it's uh, me, Metal and MMA podcast where we get together once a week, talk about all kinds of fun issues of the day. Well, fun or not. We're, um, I'm not going to say that today's show is going to be mailed in, but, but uh, today's show is going to be mailed in. Doesn't mean it's going to be without heart and love. Oh, no, no. It, well, we're actually in a rare good mood on this show. I would almost say great. Giddy. Yeah. Yeah. Giddy. Incontinently giddy. <laughs> we're pissing ourselves <laughs> with joy. <laughs> Which usually you'd have to see a doctor. That never happened. Gothic Western show that came to its bloody end in 2006. And not by the hands of uh, characters in the show, but by the fucking channel that gave it life. I mean, the dirty cocksuckers at HBO. That's right. To put it in, in apropos terms. We're getting, we're getting a close. 
Deadwood, the movie, <sighs> premiering like well, in about 20 minutes. Yeah, which, uh, which we're fine. With. Yeah, we're good because that thing, thankfully, isn't. It actually doesn't come on on actual HBO until nine o'clock. So HBO now customers like you and I are getting first. Oh, right first we're getting dips. Yeah, the um, look forward to this. Now, the, here's the one thing: I watched like the first like four episodes. Which, by the way, I'm not even going to say spoiler alert because if you're this far behind, it's been 13 years since the last season, shit. motherfuckers. And, and I'm talking season one, so then we're talking like what, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, oh four, six, oh oh, so that's only 15 then. 15, 15, okay. 14, and 13 for one, two, and three. I guess so, but but I mean, I I watched till they like killed off Wild Bill, you know, and I'm like oh well. I'm kind of done. I had a very small child in the house at the time who just oh, graduated. Right. Who just graduated high school? If that makes you. <laughs> Congratulations. We, um, but uh, yeah, man, it was. Um, it, it, I was like, I can't be watching this show. So I got like four episodes in Deadwood, and had to hang it up. And well, I and it was uh, it was up until like two years ago that I was convinced by you to go back and pick it up. And fuck, if that wasn't the best idea I've had in a long time to actually take you up on that that's because yeah what what uh, what great timing for me to be like you know what we're gonna fucking embrace our inner nerds and we're gonna use the boot hill fucking rpg architecture to run a deadwood thing and i told you i was like look i'm running this right off of the series so this there will be spoilers if you ever go back to watch the show and i was really worried that that would hamper your enjoyment but apparently it did which is great no because there's it's it's such, it was such a great show because of the fact that it had so much depth. There's depth, no yeah. possible way. Every character was so goddamn deep. Yeah, you know, well, you know, and even the ones that weren't, you fooled yourself into thinking they were because of information you might or might not have known. Right. Calamity Jane, I think, is like a very organized or well put together character. Well, not really. Not not by watching the show. It's because. I kind of read who fucking Calamity Jane is long, long ago right. and kind of very familiar with the uh, the actual, you know, the well, biographical character. That, that is so, a problem with shows like this, you know. But it's actually a good thing because, like I said, that one character that doesn't have a lot of depth actually has a lot of depth to my way of thinking. Yeah, when uh, the episode where she was working the plague tut. Yeah. She wasn't drinking at all. Right. She was off the bottle and actually helping people get on their feet and walk out of that tent upright. Yeah, which is a bit of a task, but then you'll see her puking, shitting, pissing herself, sure, and just being a belligerent little cocksucker. And that's the beauty. Every goddamn character in this show has qualities, but boy, do they have flaws as well. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, so I mean, that's you know, this is back in the day when HBO was trying to put out content for. This their, was when Oz was on. Yeah, well, but I mean, but they're putting together content for for fans long before. Like social media became such a pervasive platform to where everybody could jump on and bitch at the uh, David Mills or whoever they, 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 they that was never even a thought in anybody's mind. You know, now people were angry a little bit that you know uh, that the someone's dying. Yeah, Silka's here and her phone's ringing. So oh. they, um, but I mean, but it, nobody even had the thought to criticize the writer or even the network or anything else people are pissed like oh this sucks what are they going to do yeah. now now you catch the uh, some simpleton who started watching game of thrones three months ago and binge watched the whole thing <laughs> right? and now they feel like that their their time has been taken away from them Man, go fuck yourself and and not to go over the top on this because i think <laughs> I addressed it you, well You enough. covered it at depth last week. Last week, but, man, find, find fucking something that, that just kind of blows your skirt up, man. Find something you find joy in in life. Embrace it. Don't sit back looking for every goddamn way to criticize it. Man, I'm as cynical as the next cat. I really am. I can, I can usually find something wrong with damn near anything. But I'm not looking for it. It has to be, it has to be obliviously out there for me to fucking ha- be affected by it. Yeah. I'm not going to go digging for it. Uh, but, God, man, we've been fucking batting pretty well. Our average is doing all right as far as good things happening well, it's for entertainment. It's because life is really shitty. Yeah, so, life is a bitch. So find the things that bring you joy and fucking embrace that. Don't, yeah. don't be the asshole that's got to shit Find the things you love on. and fucking rear naked choke it into submission. That's it. Yeah. That's what we're doing today. <laughs> uh, it is the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. Uh, again, probably not a really long one eh, for a few different reasons. Deadwood being one of them. The other is the new releases this week in metal. A little, uh, 
leaves well leaves a lot to be desired. That's and, true. And uh, there's a fight card tomorrow that I only kind of sparingly cared about. It's going to be on in the morning because it's in Sweden. Eight and then maybe one fight that I actually gave a shit about is off the card now. So, yeah, I'm curious to see. Yeah, the uh, Ilir Latifi got pulled, I guess, for a back injury or yeah. something. Uh, which is kind of a bummer because Vulcan Ozmir really, I think, needed that fight and it, needed a win. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I'm glad he's getting paid, but uh, that's not going to help. I mean, good. To, he'll probably we'll see him fight in a month for right. sure. He's ready to go. They got to line up somebody for him right away. Dude's been in camp already. Find somebody that you know might be a challenge to, as much as you can Glover? find one. Well, that guy's always game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's Glover. There's that uh, that other uh, uh, fucking Brazilian light heavyweight that blew out his shoulder while he was celebrating his win. <laughs> but that yeah. dude, that's a guy to watch as well. Yeah, he's going to be on the shelf a little bit, though. <laughs> Tell you what, there's somebody that keeps saying he wants to come back because he wants to get a fight with John Jones, and that's Rumble Johnson, who can, by the way, I'm a fan of his, but he can go fuck himself. He doesn't deserve a John Jones fight right now. You know what you want to do if you want to step in? Fight Lear Latifi. Do that. And then maybe, or, or not, yeah, Ozdemir. Uh, Ozdemir, uh with Latifi out. Fight Ozdemir. I don't think Rumble can make 205. Nah, probably not. I don't know. I mean, that John Jones fight would be at heavyweight. If That, that guy, guy is, is huge and poor. If he ever comes back, it ain't, it's not going to be in the UFC. Probably. No, it, I, and I doubt it would be in one. I'm, I don't think that guy likes to travel too much. And well, and he likes to hit women. That's <laughs> the other problem. That's kind of frowned upon. <laughs> kind of got to draw the line uh, somewhere, bro. God, I guess. That's such a bummer about that shit, too, man. Well, he claims it's not true. And, well, and fuck, it's all, this who, who is all le- judge, This is all know? allegedly, you know. Yeah. The uh, the biggest discovery, I think, it's been that he, he applied for indigency. For what? Indigency, meaning he is oh, so he has no know. money to, like, get a lawyer or pay fines if he has to. So you're saying he didn't manage his money very well. I guess the weed a business. A professional is- athlete not managing their money well? <laughs> what? Get the fuck what? out of here. Uh, un- unheard of these days. He's like, I, I need how much? I need $300,000? Cool, I'm going to fight Daniel Cormier. I'm going to bring all my $300,000 to your doorstep, get in on this weed business thing, and become a millionaire. Oh, I lost all my $300,000. I had nothing left. I'm so angry, I need to go talk to my wife. <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> I think he's actually just his uh, lady friend, right? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I honestly, I, I really don't want to. Yeah, wade into that. I, I, shit I'm anyway. I, honestly, man. I'm more looking forward to Cormier and Ferguson next week. That 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 fight. We're we're getting two titles. Cormier and two, Ferguson. no, I'm talking Donald Cerrone and Tony Cerrone, Ferguson. Cerrone, yeah. Didn't you no. say Cormier? I said yeah. Cerrone. You said you said Cormier. We'll go back to the yeah. time. Yeah, but no, Cerrone. Cerrone yeah, yeah, Cerrone and Ferguson. Uh, that 238, I think, is more stacked than the International Fight Week card already. Yeah, there's a lot of things I want to see out of that. First of all, I want to see if Cerrone, because a lot of people keep going, no, there's no way this guy is going to keep going through and murking fools at 155. Yes, he does, because that guy has got welterweight power. And he's cutting back to 155 again. And and he he looks better than the last time. He doesn't look nearly as, uh, as hesitant. Still slow, still a bit of yeah, a slow starter, yeah, which against but, a guy like Tony Ferguson, that's a little dangerous. Yeah, but I think, though, uh, he's he, he actually does count. He, his counters actually are buying him a lot of that hesitancy right, right now. His counters look great. Yeah. God, it's just every and every time after like a big win, he will discuss how he's like, man, I wasn't even ready yeah. until I got out there. And then I started getting a little ready. Right. It's the same story every time, but it's always so scary to hear because, like, man, you're going to get down there one time and maybe not be ready at all. Right. Like the RDA fight. Right. Well, that was that was just bad. I mean, we've seen. That was a mixture of seen, slow starting and bad luck. We've seen, you know, great fighters get leveled by a, a liver kick. So, yeah, you know. that's true. And Cerrone has punished that liver pretty well over well, the years. No, yeah, but, I mean, a liver kick will down anybody, and it's going to stay with you for until the fucking fight's over sure. if you're able to survive it. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're not going to be operating on the same level. Yeah, I mean, we got a uh, uh, Shevchenko and Jessica I fighting for the uh, f- for the flyweight title. Turn on that one. I want I want uh, Shevchenko to win, but uh, our friend uh, Alex Poinar has uh, basically been one of the trainers for Jessica I. He might be in her corner actually. That'd be pretty dope. Uh, I don't. I thought I might have read where Jessica I changed camps for this fight. I think I, that's a while well, back. I can't remember, but uh, Poinar still posts I, a yeah, lot well, of things about her. I think. I think she actually moved to that camp after her last one, right? 
Or maybe fight before? I don't, I, I don't I'm know. not sure. But regardless, <clears throat> they're, they're good pals. And I can understand why you'd be torn with that. But I have to go for my wife, <laughs> the love of my <laughs> life. Should have known it yet, but you know. I should have been at that Metro PCS store in Austin. Right. I could have. We. I probably wouldn't be here right now. Right. I'd could've, be. Fl- I'd be flying to wherever the fuck two thirty eight is. Could have dropped trow and pushed that uh, that fruit bowl right up against the window, and she would have went. There it is. That's what I've been waiting That's for. That's exactly what I need. Yeah. And uh, you'd see a tear rolling down my cheek, and then you'd see me on episodes of Embedded rubbing yeah. her back. That's right. God, this guy. All right. What? Um, yeah, the uh, what are some other things on the card that um, that you're that kind of spark your fancy? Because honestly, for two thirty eight, uh, the one that's coming up tomorrow. Oh God! Because that's what we've been kind of talking. Uh, well, we've been bouncing back and forth between the two. Oh God, man! I'm, see, I mean, Gu- Gus is fight. It's basically the has bens. He also runs everybody that John Jones has beaten the past year are fighting in the main event. And I guess it's a, it's not a bad move by the promotion. Because if John Jones fucks up again, does something else stupid, and gets suspended for two years this next time, whoever wins that fight, they're going to be the ones that are in the position to move in and take two of five right back. But Joe, if, if Jones fucks up again, I'm I'm off that train. Well, I've you been have with, to be, man. That's I've been a with that strike. guy. I've been with that guy for this long. And it, it, those are two pretty goddamn significant strikes against yeah. him. The the biggest one being the kerfuffle in fucking Albuquerque. Yeah, well, but he did say he did say sorry, you know. So well, yeah, he did say whoops a doodle. Yeah, my like, bad. Sorry, bro. lady. As he ran back to grab his weed and his money. Uh, Jimmy Mann was fighting somebody I've never heard of, and Alexander Ra- Rakic, Rakic, Rasic, R A K I C. Um, sounds like a Serb name. It's probably Rasic. A uh, Christos Gallegos is fighting in the a lightweight ro- bout. Rakic, Rakic. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Man, this Ser- is a, Serbs are fucked it's a up. It's a very thin card. I'm sorry. As far as names go, it's a very thin card. And it's on in the morning. This is not going to be the fight that you. It's not put even your beef all on. on ESPN Plus. Yeah, the prelims are on ESPN too. Um, prelims are on plus the main card ESPN two. I think and I might have that. Yeah, ask you got it around. Okay. Prelims ESPN two main card on. Uh, you know, plus. is that is it just me? But if you're a fucking cord cutter, this ESPN relationship has been fucked. Sure. Day one, because oh here you go ESPN Plus cool I'll sign up for that that's only five dollars a month I can watch all this UFC shit because they clearly they don't want other people being they're, they're, they bought it out for the reason why NFL teams sign players that usually fucking destroy them so that way they don't have to deal with that person I think that's what ESPN did with this UFC deal no. but the problem is they're they're trying to cross platform this bitch to where then your basic cable if you're a cable customer. And, uh, you know, you're still living in the 1500s or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, so you're going to get ESPN, the, the, the regular, the real deal. Yeah. Uh, usually, like, a package bump gets you ESPN2. You have to get a subscription to get ESPN3 because that's their online and streaming, classic. right? And, and classic. Well, classic's another one they throw in, right? But then ESPN Plus is a stream-only service. So they're wanting you to just keep loading their pockets full of money. And every time you see a dispute between a satellite company... Or a cable company, it's always because of ESPN. It's fucking almost never because of anybody else. Yeah. I wish it was a better option. Well, they're the ones that paid the SEC a billion dollars to cover their games for a decade. Fuck that. Yeah. So ESPN, like, stupid moves and money. And so now they want you to cover their stupid mistakes in programming. Sounds like professional wrestling. Well, it sounds like a Disney corporate. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh. He said it. What are you doing down there, dog? Miles trying to get frisky with me. Um, I just felt like something rubbing on my leg. I'm like, oh, hello. Yeah. Knock it off, Silka. <laughs> <laughs> no more under the table, love. <laughs> I uh, can appreciate you people being all weird and everything. But um, <laughs> but anyway, but that's kind of the uh, the MMA part uh, as we work our way backward this time. But um, I don't know. 238 is coming up next week. Oh, by the way, a programming note on this. We're going to be doing the podcast early because my dumb ass has to go out of town. Get like some awards or some shit? Yeah. Don't any of you fools think about jacking my shit because I got a house sitter. So. Damn it. Oh, why are you looking at me? A couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but nonetheless, though, uh, yeah, so we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be firing out an early one next week. So um, metal side of things. What about it? What about it? It's... It's there. Yeah. We did have some releases today. Some are pretty fun. 
That Glory Hammer release is probably the shining star of the week. It's odd because how often would we have a, a power metal band in the fucking, basically it's the top, top ride on this whole thing. But um, King Hobo has got a new record out <laughs> I today. I fucking love that name. By the name of uh, MAGA. Now, if you, if you go anywhere, they'll say, hey, this is a stoner metal band. I'm here to tell you they're not. They are a band that could play your bar mitzvah, your quinceanera, your, uh, I don't know, your little metal show downtown. Your little uh, backyard country barbecue. Your blues fest. They play everything. God, yeah, I, that, that was what you were playing when I came in. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's all over the map. Um, the Texas Hippie Coalition. I hate them already, but their music video <laughs> really helped uh, in that aspect. I'm assuming that they're... They probably claim they're from Austin, but they're probably not. They're probably from, like, Round Rock or some... Texas yeah. Hippie Coalition? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they were from fucking Dallas proper. Oh, really? Well, well I'm, I'm going to fucking find yeah, out. Pro- probably fucking East Dallas, huh? Where's that chunky ginger bastard from? That's true. It looks like fucking... De- Denison, Texas. Well, there you- Yeah, that is, de- that is the greater... That's the Metroplex area. Yeah, you're right. Shit, I didn't mean to be right. Well... That's that's what you get, but yeah, that's that's kind of uh, that's that's the uh, Dallas subdivision that's not Fort Worth. So, God, man, that fucking singer, like I was telling you, he's like that guy is like what you if you look like that in junior high, high school, your ass is probably getting just destroyed as far as fucking hazing with a huge shit beard? talking. Well, well, you know, you probably have that little fledgling beard, but that gut is fucking still there. That yeah, guy's probably been that size his whole life. He he legitimately looks like Charlie Daniels from way back in like the late seventies. Probably a little fatter though. Like a ginger Charlie Daniels. And uh, with a bigger beard and wearing sunglasses for a different reason altogether. Yeah, this fucking guy I mean, Vinnie Paul dies of heart disease. We know Vinnie Paul didn't go out eating fucking rotisserie chicken dinners by his bare greasy hands every yeah. night. That dude just drank all the time. Right. This yeah. guy's enjoying Arby's pipe and hot beef and cheddar's probably on the reg, and and we st- we get a new Texas Hippie Coalition album out of it. You know, this is a man that has reached his hand into a pot of barbecue shit, and just pulled some weird odd things out, odds and ends, and consumed them on the spot. Licked his hands at least eight times, and then asked for a fucking paper towel. Oh, you know he did, man. You know he has. We are really talking shit about the <laughs> Texas Hip Sorry. Coalition. Sorry. I didn't even think that think was going to happen. But I, think it shows, I think it shows some balls because they could drive over in about like seven hours, six, seven, six, seven yeah, hours. Bring it on. Yeah. I'll take the yeah. big one. <laughs> Good man. I'll Fucking take, ginger I'll take bowl. on the guy playing the tiny little, I don't know what the fuck that was. Like a NES zapper with gu- guitar strings on it, I think. It looks like one of those like, you know, traveler guitars. They put <laughs> out like little tiny ones you can take camping with you and, the, and like under like a lot of public pressure they finally put out like an electric one it looks like that yeah. i thought it was an esp but if it is that is a custom job head to toe and probably cost you'd have to have a sponsorship for him to even consider doing that thought of, well I, I don't know i've never seen guitars that tiny outside of like traveling guitars um i guess i don't know i mean I, like steinberger used to have like you know that was the ones that had no headstock and all the right. tuning pegs in the yeah. back but this has a fucking headstock that's the weirdest thing about it has this a headstock guitar. and the body is a goddamn gun that's why it looks stupid right well let's keep in mind also that um a guitar is an instrument you might have a lot of great fucking tone things set up for through all your effects and everything you have with boards and various digital processors and everything else and, and uh, popping it through amplification and everything else. But let's not forget the guitar is a goddamn instrument. You can control function and tone through your own goddamn guitar. But I shouldn't have to tell people that. But Right. That's, but that's the Texas Hippie Coalition. So Yeah. Actually, there, there's some pretty – this news might actually affect your – music enjoyment as far as iPod listening goes. Apple's fucking phasing out iTunes. Yeah. Which, fucking more power to them. They need a new platform to interface your iPod with your computer. Yeah, I like that, that you know, that you have to... Con- you know, people will give you shit for buying physical copies of shit. Yeah. But we live in an age where physical copies are the only thing that's going to save you your, your own fucking money in the long run. Right. Everything gets phased in and out. iTunes was the top of the heap. What, eighteen eight years. years. Ago. It's been eighteen years that, that fucking program's been I mean, around. that was the peak. Eight years ago was eight prior. Years is, it's been eight years for like fucking uh, uh, Microsoft for 
that for that fucking shit. Well, but I mean, but the uh, eight years ago there was no, there were no streaming services per se, right? You know, and then Pandora came along, but you're not able to pick anything you want to listen to with that no. shit. You know, you're just kind of throwing on a channel. Spotify you had a little more control Spotify with Spotify a little more, and then Apple Music came out. At each evolution, it's more and more controllable by what you want to do which is okay, but it's also bad in a certain area because if you're not aware of something, you're not going to go out of your way to listen to new shit. Sure. Thankfully, we are vagabonds, rogues, and ramblers around here, and we like to find new shit no matter what. Well, that's a fact. That's a fact. But um, So anyway, so they're going to phase it out, and so people have, like, I don't know, over $1,000 invested in music. Well, I, I, think <clears> everything's gonna, be, you know. I, I think everything's going to carry over to this new... Uh, uh, you know this new program they'll use to interface with it's your called, iPod. Uh, Apple Nutshot. Is that what it it's is? Called Apple Sent iPad. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's look, iTunes is uh, one of the most bloated fucking programs. No, no, it ever is. Made. It absolutely is. That will bog any computer down because for a goddamn music player that you can use to download songs and videos, it needs a lot of goddamn resources. I've got a reasonably good phone. I never brought iTunes onto this phone. Smart man. Um, migrated over because I knew how big that fucking thing is. That that's purely a desktop PC fucking thing for me. Right. You know, and uh, I mean, and, and you know, and I'm I'm not really one to talk too much shit because of the fact I'm still using an iPod Touch. No, no, God not one of the brand new ones got launched today. I've got one I bought in 2010. I got you beat. I'm still using. I don't even know if it still works. So I can't say I'm still using it. But I still have it. A goddamn black. 80 gig fourth gen with the wheel. <laughs> I'm still. But it's kick ass, man. 80 gigs? 80 am, gigs space. Yeah. Well, it's bigger than my touch. But my touch, I got because of the fact I had an employer that would provide us flip phones. Now, this is 10 years ago or whatever. What are, what are those, years, Grandpa? Um, I'm just kidding. You know, and I, always, I wanted a smartphone at that time. This is in 2010. I wanted a smartphone. I had an employer said, nope. Here you go. Company phones a flip phone. Enjoy. Here's your razor. Yeah. <laughs> so I went out and bought an iPod Touch because I wanted some of the features that that fucking had to offer. And and that's when I kind of started buying music over iTunes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so to kind of see it all kind of come full circle on this deal as my iPod Touch now entering its uh, over ninth year now of service. God damn, I'm surprised the battery is still rocking in it. I have to plug it in every day. Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're not getting a solid eight to ten hours continuous play no. out of it. Once upon a time, I could, uh, I could I could, actually get a couple of days off of it. Yeah, me too. I'm on, on my go, iPod, but, but, man, those days are long gone. Yeah, man. And I don't know how you can go about replacing the fucking batteries. You can't. You, you can't. It, it's, it's just dead. You throw it in the trash. Oh, cool. Well, you hit it with a hammer, and then you throw it in the trash. But um, Weep and then garbage it. Which is funny, though, because they just released the new newest generation of iPod Touches today. And you would say, why would you need that? Well, because Apple's doing a lot of weird, funky shit. And if you're a smart person... You're going to go Android for your phone shit, and then you'll go an iPod Touch for your Apple shit. I'm not saying that if you're a smart person, because I think you're dumb if you don't. <laughs> I'm saying it because that's almost where Apple makes you have to go. They're not accessible in any way, and the service, if you're in rural parts of America, good fucking luck with AT&T. Yeah, right. Goddamn. Oh. Well, that was sort of a... Wasn't a metal tangent, but it's a little bit of a... Well, it was because it involves what we like to do, and that's, that's true. listen to fucking music. Anyway, uh, anybody important die on this date or anything? Or? Just my love of life. Oh, good man. <laughs> we'll change that soon. Death Angel put out Humanicide today. Okay, well, now I want to kill myself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Death Angel, no shit, is probably still the best thrash metal, album, thrash metal band that's currently active still. You're getting legit 80s thrash metal from guys that are... They don't really get recognized as one of the pioneers of it, but they certainly put in their fair share of work back in the late 80s. And Ruben Gonzalez is all over these guys. All I, I still I still think it's because he saw them live. I have that feeling, too. You see a band live, you're like, fuck, man, I love that shit. Sure. But uh, it, it, it's thrash metal, so it's not like really something you can fucking put on and just groove well, to every day. On the metal side of things, they're really my bucket list of shit I truly have to see. Before I die. Well, actually, one is before this year is out, and that is Tool. I want to see Tool live, Church. and it will be. It will be in the fall or early winter. That will. That's a thing. It will happen. Um, looking at their past tour dates, yeah, absolutely. That we'll, we'll be able to. They do won't that. play New Mexico, but no, they no, will no. play nearby. But we'll we'll either make a trip to Denver 
Oklahoma City or Dallas, and we will be uh, fuck Phoenix if we have to. But fuck that, um, man. If they play Phoenix, they're probably playing Vegas, and we'll just go to Vegas. Yeah. Well, hey, there you go. We'll we'll catch a show in fucking Phoenix, and then head straight to Vegas. Damn, that might wow. That might be a mind blowing trip right there. Wouldn't that be perfect? Yeah. Wouldn't that be perfect? That'd be fucking ideal. Um, but that's the one. The other one. Um, and I don't know if it's realistic to see him this year or not. Although they are going to be out on tour, but that's Paul Bearer. Yeah, I saw they're going to be not even like a co-main event, but kind of a support act for Saxon uh, or May, Baroness. 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 Yeah, Baroness. but they but they've toured with them before. Yeah, so it's not but exactly I, new news. But it's all a northern yeah stretch, Midwest and northern tier of states. That's if they were coming it. nearby, I would go. I, Paul Bearer's probably getting a half hour out of it. You know, being the second act. On, if they're the second act on the poster, they're the second act on the bill. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I seem to think that they should be the fucking headliner yeah. or co-headliner, well, whatever you want to call it. They've already had their headlining Heartless tour. Because, I mean, Heartless is getting to be, what, two years old? Two or yeah. three years old? It, it's about time to actually start blueprinting that next one. So yeah. that's probably why they're doing this. You don't have to play for 90 minutes, and you're still getting paid for a tour cycle, and then you can start working on that new album. Metallica is already working on new shit. By God, Paul Bearer better yeah. fucking be on the, the days the Metallica and Tool start setting the precedent for work ethic and music <laughs> releases. We're going to be in deep fucking trouble. <laughs> but we won't be. We won't put, be in as big a trouble. Put that shit on a T-shirt. Put that shit on a T-shirt. <laughs> but we won't be in as big trouble as Corey Taylor, who blew his left testicle out <laughs> while singing a song. Maybe uh, maybe bring that range down a little, son. Well, funny you mentioned that. It says, working on my 87 dock in high notes this morning. Fucked around and blew out the left testicle. <laughs> Careful on re-entry, kids. So, for me, fucked around, got a triple-double, but that's a uh, whole different song. How the, uh, yeah. how the fuck do you blow out a ball singing? Well, the joke is always you uh, grab your testicles, right, to get that high range and... Yeah, but if you blow out a nut, you're stuck there. And you're also uh, apparently affecting uh, the ability of fatherhood. Well, Are we sure this isn't some reasonably uh, con- uh, concocted thing? Corey might- Taylor's girlfriend got on uh, Twitter and said, can't confirm Corey Taylor's balls are just fine. So apparently apparently was easily repaired, but, you know, you blow a fucking nut singing a song. That- you want to blow a nut? Not that way. Yeah, not like I like a spare tire. I'm like, yeah, fuck that shit. Now I'm bummed. Sounds like sounds like somebody's making up some shit if his girlfriend said he's fine. Uh, of course, that again, I don't know. She might have smacked him on the ass and said, get back in there. Well, this is right after he also had surgery on both of his knees. This dude's been having some bad luck lately. Nuts and knees. <laughs> Nuts and knees. I think that's the next single off of their upcoming new album. Actually, I think that's the Dove Soap's uh, slogan. That's the... Uh, yeah. Oh. That's what you wash first because... Then everybody at bathes after you're going to have to use it on their face. All right. Yep. Yep. That's right. Got nut knee on my face. <laughs> a little, uh, terrible. little nut butter there. Yeah. there you. Uh, that's the uh, metal portion. Now, as we work our way backwards, I guess, are we done with the metal side? Yeah. Yeah. There ain't nothing. Uh, John, happy birthday to Johnny B. John Bonham. Johnny B. Puking and choking on it and dying. John Bonham. Well, better choke on your own vomit than somebody else's. I think that was established in Spinal Tap, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's fucking food for thought. Better be pissed well, off and well, pissed on, right? Or, uh, or recycled food for thought, yeah. In the afterlife. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, to the mead <laughs> side. To the mead side we go. We got a label. Uh, I decided to go ahead and fucking put the nose to the grindstone today and put in a solid hours of work. Yeah, instead of getting that pregame drinking in, you, you were working. Yeah. Well, it wasn't exactly the hardest label design either because I wanted to go simple because we have batch one that's going to be ready in about two weeks. Two weeks, maybe, maybe less. We're yeah, we're. we're it's looking, it. man. That horse hoof, it made all the difference in the world on that batch. That's a glowing batch of mead. Because we were fine with it having a little bit of a cloud to it, because we wanted to keep the flavor. Right. I think with just that one addition, we're still going to keep the flavor and get gold. It's going to be a pretty batch, you know, and uh, we're going to be bottling that within two weeks. Probably less than two, but two is the uh, safe statement there. Got the uh, label design done. I think uh, simplistic is what we're aiming for. Simplicity, sexy, and rustic. Yeah. And and a little heathen. A little, a heathen little bit. As it's, it should be. It's got, it's got a few uh, inside lines on some things. It's also the same parchment as a previous batch we did on one run. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, but it's it. If you're a label freak, you'll probably enjoy some of the weird little things that I kind of did on that one, even though it looks very clean and simple. But really, outside of God, what? There's really not a label we've made that is actively busy, right? But maybe. Oh, there is that motherfucker. No, 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 that's a different deal. I'm getting oh. a uh, heads up from the little slot machine game for our Las Vegas trip. Goddamn later. slot machine! I, I think Troublemaker might be the most. If you want to talk about busy, because we got the crowns, you know. Well, that one I wanted to make sure it looked like it came out of the Middle Ages. Oh yeah, and the crowns helped. That's that's what people used to do because obviously if the crowns were on it, that meant that the royalty of whatever it'd be in the kingdom of Luxembourg or or uh, Mercia or wherever it might have been yeah. that they had signed off on it, so right. they would get crowns, you know, put put on the label to indicate that they had the okay of the kingdom of wherever you might have been. That's what they. That's what they used to do, like on like really expensive bottles of wine too. Like Germany were, did it on on beer because of, because really? of the Purity Act. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but because Germany one time had like, shit, it was a confederation of like 40, 50 something states, you know, once upon a time. Yeah. So every different one had a count or a baron or whoever, you know, so you'd have to, you'd have to put a crowns yarl. on things. I was about to, to say a Jarl, but that's a little more Nordic. Uh, no, no. Yeah. That's that year. That's well, what I'll be. I want to go online and buy like a one square foot piece of land in Scandinavia and be named a Jarl. Of yep. that one square foot of land, it'd be mine. I'd probably just call you a thane. It's probably. I don't want to be a thane. That's like some Skyrim <laughs> shit. And you're always a thane to a dick. No, no, it's that's that's not Skyrim. That's that uh, used to be actual titles of nobility. Oh, well, it the, just uh, reminds me out of, of the Northmen. Yeah, but, that's all it's going to well. remind me of is being a fucking fetch em boy for these assholes. Yeah, well, there you go. Step and fetch it. Uh, good at it. The uh, batch uh, that we all that we're working on for our um, for our holiday batch. We're, uh, we haven't added the flavorings yet because of the longer time that goes by. The, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, playing, time, we're playing with house And money. the less we disturb it, the better. Yeah. I, I, I kind of felt like, well, when are we going to go ahead and put some flavorings to it? I want to do it soon, but we've got time. Sure. I mean, even if we don't get it done before you head off to Albuquerque, we're, we're good. Yeah. It's not really something that needs to be done on a schedule because time is, time is a great thing. We've got the juniper. And the uh, peppermint and spearmint are coming in. I, it's, I mean, to the point where I'm throwing that shit away. So yeah, yeah. That little sprig you gave me, I planted in my front yard, and that motherfucker is it's, starting to come out. Yeah, no, no. Mint, mint is a weed. You have to keep an eye on it. It'll right. take over all your shit if you're not careful. Yeah, I got to go down there and kind of... It's got a weird manifest destiny to it. So True. Yeah. Once it gets yeah. going, man, it don't stop. Uh, nonetheless, that's uh, that's kind of what we got going on for this week. We've got some important shit to do's. God. Damn, do we ever? Let's um, oh, uh, we're still working our way backwards. Sorry. So, uh, so how's your week? I, I had I had a, a Dante night last night because you, you uh, weren't even supposed to be there last night. That's no, I wasn't, but it was because I'm a fucking team player. Yeah, you uh, you appreciate where that money comes from. Yeah, You're willing I guess. to tickle them balls all you got. Yeah. Well, we're getting a kitchen, which is kind of cool. Cool, a whole bunch of because chefs. And I've stuff. been preparing breakfast in a laundry room for the past three and a half years, which sounds horrible, I know, but it's really not. It's just the same room when we do laundry. I have to get bread ready and mix waffle batter and what have you. Well, it, make, it kind of really makes perfect sense for people that are still with us on this episode because you're like the E.B. Farnham <laughs> of the Super 8, really. I, I am because, well, I'm just, I am nosy as fuck. <laughs> I'm really nosy. <laughs> I, I was going to let you volunteer. It. Not I was to the let point. You not to the point where like I'm going to break into your room and find out why you're here. But occasionally, if I know you're a local, I will put your fucking name in on the internet and find out whatever I can about you, which is a bad idea. Bad idea. Yeah. Because uh, I will say, out of every, I've done it. Say I've done it ten times. Out of the ten times, four of them had active warrants. <laughs> sure. And we, know, cool. and we know. Cool. And, and we know ten times is a well. That's well under the target there. Oh, yeah, I've done it dozens of fucking yeah. times. But, I mean, that that just goes back with my fascination of having to watch that fucking computer. Watch that computer. Watch the security cameras. The, uh, the other night, I had a guy come in on Tuesday night, a kid that had a horizontal ID. Oh, meaning he was under 21. Yeah, which means you're not getting a goddamn room. Right. Uh, 
Got to be over 21 to get them shits. Yeah, you got to be over 21 to get a room at the Super 8 and deal drugs. So, I told him, like, I no can do, man. You're under 21. I cannot rent a room to you. And not only that, you're from Patel's. So, oh. <laughs> so, that's a, that's well, a double whammy of, no, you're not getting a fucking room here. Go down to Classic American. You'll, you'll I was gonna say There are two establishments in this town that will <coughs> accommodate that. One's Classic American, con me in, and the other is a Sands. Yeah. So both of which look like they're basically if, if you're going to shoot a movie where somebody gets murdered in the movie, I would recommend those for locations because sure. it's very it's believable or in the fact that it's happened, I think, or yeah. where we dump garbage at the Super 8. That's a pretty great place to find a dead body. <laughs> I tell you. So I this kid gets back in his pickup and leaves. And any time that happens where someone's like bummed out because they didn't either want to pay for the room due to the rate I was giving them or I just told them fuck off. I always watch to see where they go because more times than not, their ass will go park in the parking lot and just crash. Right. Like uh, like the, uh, I don't know, all the people, the RVs and all the other, like the ones been there for, I don't know, all of 2019, basically. Well, that RV has actually been empty. It used to be down there at the Best Western. That's where uh, the workers were staying. Now it's just fucking there taking up space. Yeah, exactly. Along with that fucking car and that fucking tr- uh, gooseneck trailer. Make guy. it looks really, it looks really classy. Do, so, I know, doesn't yeah. it though? Adds a real air of uh, yeah, these people got their shit together. This and then and then quality. you find out locals can find out they can get a room there for forty nine bucks. Then you know you're gonna attract trash. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna attract trash. And that's what this kid was trash. So he fucking parks on the south side thinking I'm not gonna see you. But God damn it, I see I see everything. Yeah. I see fucking. Everything. Right. So they don't realize they're dealing with basically a fucking a madman. They're yeah, dealing right, with right. a psychopath. That's right. Okay. At if, every other aspect of my life, probably not. Maybe drinking. Maybe maybe my green liquor. I don't know. But over there, I'm a fucking madman. Sure. So I I get I'm in this mind. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna let this kid be parked here for 20 minutes because after that, your fucking ass is loitering, borderline trespassing, and I'm gonna call the cops. So 20 minutes. He didn't leave. Not only that, he fucking turned his radio on, which, of course, had a lot of low end on it. Oh, he's like, just blasting it out there? What the? What is he, a fucking dummy? Yes. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. So I was like, shit, I'm not going to have to fucking wait to call the cops at all because five minutes later, I get a phone call. Yeah, there's someone in the parking lot blaring music. I'm like, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to deal with it right now. My, it might take about 10 minutes, but I'm going to deal with it. Call the cops and say, hey, I got someone parked in my parking lot that's just hanging out, didn't get a room because he's under 21, and now he's just parked trying to get a nap listening to his goddamn music at full volume, probably with the windows cracked so he can smoke his meth. Come arrest him now. So if he's listening to Moon Sorrow and smoking weed, though. I would have gone to his truck and told him, dude, <laughs> just you're going to have to. Look, I'll tell so you. I'll, Choices oh. mean everything in life, children, if you're listening That's to this true. podcast. There hey, is. <laughs> truth and honesty goes a long way with hospitality people that work after midnight. So cops came, fucking gave them the... They didn't, I, I didn't want them arrested. I just wanted them the fuck gone. Yeah. Which happened. But ass came back last night. Okay. And not to get a room. He immediately came in and just went and parked in the back. Same fucking place last time. Isn't that what Walmart's for? Shit, that's what every other goddamn parking lot is for. That isn't a hotel parking lot with surveillance. Right. Because we'll know. It's not like no one's ever done it before. There was a dude. And it's funny that you're like kind of like the overnight guy. You're not like the head dude. Well, not that you want it. But, no, I don't want but, it. I mean, but clearly, I'm like John Snow. I don't want that it. Is clearly a, that's clearly a fucking thing. You've got a weird See, fuck dedication. See, the E.B. Farnham thing. I'm like John Snow. Yeah, accommodation. I could too. be king, but I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of accommodation. But... Ugh, that's a weird fucking guy. Co- yeah. Can I at least have the looks of Jon Snow and yeah, the maybe. attitude of E.B. Farnham? I know you were serving up some weird things on your buffet table there, so uh, better well. Well, I, I've always liked the stuff left over offals in the shepherd's pie. Uh, all right. But, uh, yeah, like uh, second time, kid came down. I didn't even call the cops. I just went out there. I was like, dude, don't make me call the cops because they probably will arrest you, and I'm going to have to get it. At the bare minimum, you're getting a do not dress pass because. And then you, you have to wake up early and go to court. Yeah, that, that's why you would think that'd be a detriment to me wanting to fucking call the cops. But it's not because I'm insane. Yeah. And I hate I hate people that break the rules right. between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. After that, I don't fucking give a shit. Yeah. Rule breaker yourself in the majority of the time. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's my life. It doesn't affect anybody else. So I went and stocked up on some groceries today. 
um, and uh, you know, in the uh, run up to uh, the viewing of Deadwood here in the next few minutes, actually. Oh, no. So I stopped by, and I said, "Well, we did. We'd had Basil Hayden and Dark Rye. I'd already got that last, which weekend. was quite good. If I'd give a quick hip shot review of that, one of the best bourbon based ryes." I think I've had. Well, it's kind of not. It's still, but, I mean, it's still pretty sweet. Well, that's because it's a port. They, yeah, add, they add port to it, not bourbon. Oh, that's right. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I always, it's like sweet rye. I always assume it's like bourbon barrels and I, sugar. I don't know why Basil Hayden just can't crank out a straight rye, but anyway. but um, So I picked Apparently that up. they can, because it says it's, like a Canad- it's mixed with a Canadian straight rye that they probably do provide. Yeah. I, well, they don't put it out. It's, it's probably just in Canada. It's not here. Probably um, just Canada. But anyway, it's fine. I thought, well, that's cool. We'll have Basil Hayden to drink for uh, the Deadwood premiere. A lot better than the bourbon. And then you sent me a photo this week, basically Steve Fields in the uh, in the show. They pulled all the – and now, I don't think it's Bullet Rye they're drinking. No, it's Bullet Bourbon Yeah, because it's an uh, orange label. Oh, they actually left the label on. I, yeah. I tried to zoom in a little. My phone kind of sucks on that to a degree. I thought they'd pulled the labels off, but I did see, like, basically frontier whiskey kind yeah, of. Yeah, you know. because you can pull the label off, but you can't fucking take away the glass imprint. You right. Know? You know yeah. that's a bottle of bullet, and it probably was around at that time. No, not really, but it, but it looks like it should have been, and I, I buy that. Oh, that's really? fine. Was, yeah. has, is bullet not, like, fucking 100-plus no, years old? No, it's... It's not been around that fucking long. Frontier. You, frontier whiskey. I know. It's for, because, well, we live on the frontier. Oh, we do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. But, uh, you got fiber optic internet out here. We don't live on the fucking frontier. Yeah, fuck that. We, uh, we're we high-tech fucking frontier nerds. Ooh, so, ooh. Yeah. That sounds like a dangerous thing. Yeah, like a t-shirt again. All right. But, uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, so I'm walking out. I have a 15-pack uh, of tall boys in one hand and bags of stuff in the other, basically to make nachos with tonight because that's, you know. Ooh, good fucking choice. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. Nachos. Uh, but uh, but anyway, so I'm walking out. There's a lady probably in her mid-70s, late 70s, maybe even early 80s. I don't know. It's hard for we'll me. We'll call it 80. I don't know. Walking in, and uh, she's walking in with a child, and she goes, there's a man that likes his beer. And I stopped, and I went, what? And I looked down, and I went, oh, thank God I thought I left my bottle of whiskey at the counter. Because <laughs> I knew what she was doing. <laughs> she was judging she was judging me for hauling out 15 pints of beer. I wanted to make sure she was aware that more, more debauchery than that was going to be going on. Try to on. smack me in the mouth in front of your grandkid. I'm going to smack you right back verbally. Right. I have no problem with that. I, I mean, either. In fact, I take a weird joy in that. To Fuck yeah, that. man. That's a beauty. That's, what I, that's one of the few things I enjoy about my job. Because there are people that come down there that are occasionally dumb enough where I can just be myself. And they think they're getting the utmost proper service. Yeah, I'm well, really. I'm not giving them a goddamn thing other than my, <laughs> my, my fucking neutrality of their existence and what they like and what they hate. They're all assholes anyway. Huh. Well, there's more bad than good in the hospitality business. Let's move on to making our picks for the week. Good idea. I picked working all across our way, the board. Working our way backwards. As I'm this drinking is the Deadwood. End. I'm listening to Deadwood. And I picked Deadwood over Game of Thrones via second round knockout. All right. Uh, MMA side, I've got Alexander Gustafson winning in front of his home crowd. Uh, yeah, I got I got Gustafson winning, but I don't think it's going to really do a whole lot for no. him because these are two guys that have suffered losses from the same guy that are fighting. One of them needs a win. The other is going to fall into obscurity. I think it's going to be Anthony Smith. Probably. Uh, drinking. Uh, as far as that, no, wait. No, no, metal side. Metal side, there is nothing metal. Um I'm going to go back a ways. And I'm going to keep that. listening to Pelican's Cold Hope Lee, and uh, fucking pick. get the rage going. Um, yeah, I get my I get my rage tempered, actually, by uh, ISIS. Unfortunate band, name for band. Uh, you know, ISIS Panopticon. said, yeah. ISIS said uh, the, uh, I, I can't remember if it was a front man or what, but they said that they wish they had stopped after Panopticon. Yeah. They feel like that was the best they'd ever done, and they should have stopped. They're not wrong. They're not yeah, wrong. I agree with it. But it's good to hear a band say that. They recognize it. Drink over the week. I'm going uh, bullet rye. I'm gonna. Uh, I gotta go. Basil Hayden just for the occasion. Good man. Deadwood. Watch it. Live it. Be it. Whatever it means. I don't know. Put, put it in your mouth and suck it. <laughs> suck it. Suck it, my friends. <laughs> we'll be back again Thursday for another one of these little and podcasts. I guess. So. Enjoy your weekend, you hoople headed cocksuckers. <laughs> Good call. <laughs>